options are getting increasingly popular and they certainly offer a very accurate way to manage the risk and return of your portfolio as an investor but they certainly come with a bigger overhead in terms of complexity. So in this video, we're going to start off with the basics, how options work and what they are, but also talk about the kind of environments in which options really thrive and where they could benefit your portfolio. So if you do want to support us and maintain these high quality videos, a great way to do that is now directly via YouTube. You can just click on the join button under this video or click on the link beside me. And then you'll get a beautiful icon next to your name, which tells us you're one of our supporters. And in YouTube Lives, we'll answer your question first. So now let's find out about options in a bit more detail. This is not a recommendation. If you want advice tailored to your specific circumstances, seek independent financial advice. So let's start off by looking at what we mean by an option. Let's start off with a call option, which is the right to buy a stock at a fixed price at a fixed time in the future. Now that sounds like a pretty simple definition, so now let's compare it alongside what we could do, which is simply to buy a stock. And the stock we're going to buy is an S&P tracker, an ETF called SPY. Now the price of that stock at the moment is $415, and I'm going to buy 100 of those shares. And that means I'm going to pay $41,500 today. Alternatively, I could buy a call option on the same stock. Now, when you buy a call option, you have to make more choices. Firstly, what's the price at which you want to buy? That's called the strike price, and I'm going to choose $420. So that's a little bit above where we are today, about $5 higher. The second decision is when our option's going to expire. And in this case, I'm going to choose an expiry date which is about a month in the future as I make this video. So that would be May the 21st. Now what's really different about the option and critically important is that it costs a lot less than buying the stock. Instead of paying $400, I only pay about $4, which is about 1% of the stock price. And normally an option will give you the right to buy 100 stocks at a time. You can't buy an option just to buy a single stock. So if in one month's time the price of this stock is very high, let's say 450, well I've got a bargain. I can buy it for just 420 and I'll exercise my option, my right to buy it at that low price. And because it's a right to buy 100 stocks, we have to multiply that $4 by 100, and the total price I pay for the option is $402 today. Now, if I'd have gone down the route of buying the stock, in one month's time, I'd make a profit if the price of SPY was more than the price I paid which was $415. And the amount of money I make or lose goes up one for one with the stock price. Whereas if I buy the option, I'll make a profit if the price is greater than $424.02. But wait a minute, the strike is 420. Why does it have to go up to $424 before I make a profit? Well, that's because of the premium I paid, which was $4.02. So my break-even price, when I make back my premium and then I get into profit, is going to be $424. But if the price in a month's time is less than $420, then I wouldn't exercise my option and it'll expire with no value. And that means I'd have lost my entire premium. Now, as a proportion of my investment, that would be 100% loss which sounds terrible, but remember that I only paid 1% of what I would have paid if I'd have bought the stock. But still, 100% loss is 100% loss, and it is actually quite likely that I will make that loss. So that's the typical trade-off when you're buying options. You pay a small proportion of the upfront value of the thing you're buying, but unless you pay a huge amount for the option, there's a fairly high probability that you'll lose your entire investment. But if the price is above your strike price plus the premium, then you start to break even and you make a leveraged profit. And that's what we're coming on to now. So this is called a payoff diagram. And here on the x-axis at the bottom of the graph, we've got the price of the stock at expiry. And here on the left, we have low values of the stock at around $390. And on the right of the graph, we've got high values of the stock at around $440. Now this dashed red line you can see, the vertical one is the strike that I chose, which is $420. And if at expiry, the price of the stock is below that, so that's this region over here, 
then I'll make a 100% loss. Here's my break even, which is $424.02. And if we go beyond that price, then I start to make a profit. Not only do I make a profit, but it's a leveraged profit. I put very little money down, but the amount of money I make on the trade becomes extremely large as a percentage of that investment. So the y-axis of this graph was in terms of dollars and cents. Now let's look at it as a percentage of the amount I invested. So the x-axis of this graph is the same. It's the price of the stock at expiry. But here beside me, the y-axis is the percentage profit I make relative to my invested premium. So let's say that the price of SPI increases by 6%. Well, if I'd bought the stock, I'd just make money one for one, so I'd have made a 6% profit. Whereas with the option, I'd have made a 400% profit. And that's because of the leverage built into the option. And if the price of the stock had gone down by 6%, well, I'd simply lose 6% if I'd have bought the stock. But with the option, I'd have lost 100%. And that's because the price would be below the strike and the option would expire worthless. So the big difference between buying a stock and buying an option is the shape of the payoff. Whereas the option is this hockey stick shape, it's non-linear, for the stock it's just a straight line, it's a linear investment. So a call option is a right to buy, and an option to sell at a fixed price at a fixed time is called a put option. And this is what the payoff looks like for an option to sell at $410. Again, notice that the premium means we start off underwater because we had to pay the premium up front. And then we reach our break even, which is the strike of the option minus the premium. And then below that price, we make increasingly large amounts of money as the price of the stock falls. So if you're bearish on a stock, you'd buy a put option. If you're bullish on a stock, you buy a call option. And both of those choices would be leveraged. And that means that the percentage gain that we make would be very significant as a proportion of our very small initial investment. Now, some people will have heard of options because of the stories about Tesla millionaires. Here's one of those stories from Nancy Boots Davison, who talks about one of her son's friends. He was 29 years old. He bought $40,000 worth of Tesla call options in spring 2019 and let them ride. But then he made so much money that he walked into the boss's office and said he was quitting. And that was because he was a multimillionaire thanks to those options. So is that really possible? How much would someone have to invest to become a millionaire with Tesla call options during the rally we just saw? Here's the incredible rally that we had in Tesla stock in 2020, where over the space of just over 200 days, it increased in value by over a thousand percent. So if you'd have simply bought the stock, in order to become a millionaire, you'd have only had to invest around $136,000. And then the sevenfold increase in the price of the stock would have pushed that investment up to a million dollars by the end of 2020. But if in April you'd have bought Tesla call options for the end of the year, struck at 200, you could have invested much less. In fact, just over $4,000 would have got you up to a million dollars in terms of the payoff. And that's because due to the leverage built into the call options, they'd have multiplied your money almost 250 times. So during these periods when we have sustained strong rallies, call options provide the leverage to really monetize those rallies. But of course in April, no one really knew whether the rally would be sustained. So just as with buying a stock, there's uncertainty about outcomes. And it's certainly not true that buying a call option will give you a guaranteed profit, far from it. It actually gives you a fairly high probability of losing your entire investment. But if there is a rally, then at least you can make a leverage gain from that rally. And of course, in February in 2021, that's when the rally kind of fizzled out for Tesla and many other growth stocks. Another way to compare stocks and options is to think about exactly what it is you're buying. When you buy a stock, you're buying something with unlimited upside. Unfortunately, you also get all of the downside, right down to a price of zero. And certainly when compared to options, you're paying a lot for all of that upside and downside. How about if you didn't want the downside? How about if you only wanted to buy the upside of a stock? Well, of course you have to pay something for that, and that's the premium that you pay up front. So that's what we're doing with the call option. We're just carving up the P&L and saying, well, I don't want the downside. I want to cap that, but I do want the upside and I'm willing to pay a certain amount for it. And in the case of a put option, I've decided that I don't like the upside because I don't think it's going to happen. And if we're bearish on a stock, then how about if we turn the downside 
into upside. And that's effectively what we're doing with a put option. We're monetizing the downside of a stock. But unlike shorting a stock where we stand to make unlimited losses if the share price rallies, with a put option, we've capped our downside if the stock does rally. But if you can buy options, maybe you can sell options as well. Yes, you can. This is what the payoff looks like if you sell an option. It's just the numbers reversed. And whereas buying a call option was bullish, selling a call option is bearish. And that's because instead of paying the premium on the first day, you receive the premium. And now the game is you want to hold on to that premium. And that only happens if the price of the underlying stock doesn't increase. So what you're hoping is that that won't happen. But if it does happen, now you've got this fairly toxic unlimited downside. And this is called a naked call. And selling an option is called writing an option. So if you write a naked call, that's a very dangerous position. And you can also sell a put. Again, the P&L is simply reversed. But now this is like a weekly bullish position on the stock because you get to keep your premium if the stock price rallies. But if the stock price falls below the strike, you start to lose that premium and you have a very large downside. Now, in this case, it's not unlimited because the lowest price that the stock can go to is zero. So it is a finite loss, but it could potentially still be a very large loss. So if you sell options or write options, then you've got a capped upside, but you take in a premium straight away. But unfortunately, it comes with a very large downside or an unlimited downside in the case of call options. So now the basics are out of the way, we can start to do the real fun stuff, which is combining options. And if you do like this video, remember you can always subscribe if you haven't already. And you can also press that thumbs up button because that'll make it more popular. So brace yourself for some fun. We're now going to combine options to create option strategies. So to start, we're going to combine two things. We're going to sell a call option, but oh dear, that's got an unlimited downside because if the price of the stock increases, we could lose unlimited amounts of money. So at the same time, what we're going to do is buy the stock as well. This is now called a buy right. We buy the stock and we write the option. Why would you write the option? Well, that's to generate income. Remember, when we sell an option, we pocket the premium. And that way, we increase the yield we receive by owning exposure to this stock. And this is what the combined payoff looks like. Above the strike price, the payoff is flat. We don't gain any more money if the price of the stock rises. Whereas below the strike price, we've still got all of that downside. Another way to think about this trade is as a curbed enthusiasm trade. We don't believe in the upside of a stock beyond a certain point, so we simply sell it and pocket the premium, and that increases our yield or income from the stock. So just as before, we buy 100 stocks, that costs us a total of just over $41,000. But we make a small gain by selling the option. So let's say I don't think the stock is going to go up by more than 10% over the time between now and the end of the year. Well, in that case, I could just sell that upside to somebody else and pocket the money today. I'd sell the 460 strike, which is about 10% above where the stock is today, and the expiry I'd choose would be for the end of the year. And by selling that option, I reduce the cost of buying the stock by $475. But this is the price I pay. If the stock does rally above my strike price of 460 by the end of the year, then I will not make any profits. I'll be kicking myself because I'd have sold that upside. However, if the stock is below the strike price, the dashed line here is how much profit and loss I'd make with the stock itself, whereas my option strategy, my buy right, is above that line. And that's because of the premium which I pocketed on day one. Now, the price of an option increases when volatility is higher. And that's when stock prices are moving around a lot. Now, at the moment, volatility has actually come back to fairly low levels. So there's not a massive benefit in selling the option. So if we do this continually, if we roll our option position and we're continually selling the upside, then during periods of high volatility, that can actually monetize that volatility and turn it into an income for us. And if you want a measure of what the volatility is for typical options on the S&P 500, and the calculation for this index, which is the VIX index, is based on 30-day options, which are deeply out of the money, notice how it varies hugely over time. 
So during the very big sell-off in March 2020, VIX spiked to well above 80%, and during the big sell-off in 2008 and 2009, again, it touched that 80% mark. And if you'd have been doing buy rights at that time, you'd have made a significant gain by selling that upside volatility. Of course, you'd have lost money on the downside, because remember, we've kept the downside, but the point is that the yield enhancement would have been significant. And also notice that volatility remained elevated for a long period of time, even while equity was rallying. So this, in fact, was a great time for buy right between March 2020 and the end of 2020. So for the kind of stocks which didn't rally a lot, the kind of boring stocks, but where the volatility remained high, these buy rights would have been perfect as a yield enhancement tool. In fact, you don't even have to do it yourself. There are many buy right ETFs where they take an index, they sell the upside every month, and that way they increase the yield on the index. Here's a list of seven of those buy right ETFs, the most popular of which is QYLD, and that's a yield enhanced version of the NASDAQ. And if you look at the dividend yield of that ETF, it's a colossal 11.8%. And that's very efficiently turned the volatility of NASDAQ stocks into a high yield for its investors. Here's a description of that ETF on GlobalX's website. They're the creator of the ETF. And as they say, this historically produces high yields in periods of volatility. As we saw, volatility certainly been falling recently, so that yield enhancement won't be so great but eventually you can bet it'll pick up again. And as they say, buying the fund saves investors the time and potential expense of writing those call options themselves. When will this underperform? Well, it's during periods of very strong rallies because there you've sold the upside so you won't participate in as much of the upside as other investors that just bought the index. Now, I speak to a lot of people who say they're scared to invest because they're worried about a crash. So for those people, something like a protective put might be the way to go. So firstly, we buy the stock. Notice the payoff is a straight line, one for one with the underlying. But at the same time, we buy a put, and that protects us beneath the strike price. The strike price is the point at which we don't lose any more money. And when we combine the two payoffs, we end up with something that looks very much like a call option. So as before, we pay about $42,000 for the stock, but we also have to pay an insurance premium, and that's $13.56. Now I've chosen a strike of 374, and that's 10% below the current price of SPY, and that's the point at which my protection will kick in. Now this protection will expire in December, and if I want to carry on the protection, I'd have to buy another option. So you can see the drawback of this approach, which is that you're continually having to pay premium to protect your downside. You can make that protection cheaper by lowering the strike price, but then the drawback is that you could take a larger loss if the index does fall. This is what the payoff looks like in practice. And again, the dashed line is the payoff if we just own the stock. Notice the premium drags down our gains because of the fact we had to pay up front. But of course, if the worst comes to the worst and the index does tank, then our insurance policy pays off. And because of the put, we'll have capped our downside. But what would you do if you're both nervous of the downside and you wanted higher income on an index? Well, in that case, you could create a collar. This is a combination of a covered call, so we'd buy the index, We'd sell the upside beyond a certain point in order to generate an income, and we'd also buy a protective put to protect us on the downside. So selling the call option would generate a premium, and buying the put would absorb some premium. And this is what the payoff looks like. Now we're still better off if the index increases in value, because we do have some upside, but if the stock price increases above the call strike, we don't make any additional profits. However, if there is a bad outcome, and the stock expires below the put strike, then we get our protected downside. Now, this is actually a fund with the ticker NUSI created by a company called Nationwide. And as ETFDB points out in its report, look at the expense ratio. It's 0.68%, which is very expensive for what is effectively a NASDAQ tracker. But as they say, the protection comes at a price. NUSI's management fee is three times that of the Invesco QQQ Trust, a plain vanilla index fund that tracks the tech-heavy 
NASDAQ 100. So while selling the upside calls does reduce the amount you have to pay for this, it's still a very expensive way to get exposure to the NASDAQ. This trick of selling the upside to reduce our costs is used all over the place. So let's say we're enthusiastic about a stock, but we don't want to pay the full price for a call option. Well, in that case, we could do something called a bull call spread. So first of all, we buy a call option with unlimited upside, but if we don't think that the stock is going to go above a certain level, we can sell that upside in the form of another call option. So we have another strike, which is the upside we don't believe in. And that way, this strategy reduces our overall premium cost. And what we end up with is a payoff that looks just like that collar that we saw previously. Below the lower strike, we've capped our downside, and above the upper strike, we've capped our upside. And between the two strikes, once we cross our break even here, is where we make our money. So for example, we could buy a 370 strike call option on SPY, which would cost us $56. But to make it a little bit cheaper, we could sell some upside beyond 460. So that would gain us about $5 in premium. And this is what our payoff would look like. Our break even would be 421. So if the value of SPY exceeds that, we start making money, but then we'll only make it up to the upper strike price. Beyond that, our upside is capped. Now, sometimes there's a big event for a stock and we don't know which way it'll push the price. What we do know is that the price will move a lot, either up a lot or down a lot. In that case, we could buy a straddle. Unfortunately, this is quite an expensive strategy because you have to buy two options. We'd buy the put option, that's the payoff you can see underneath me, and we'd also buy a call option, and both of them would have the same strike. And when we combine them, this is the payoff we get. We only lose money with this strategy if the stock price doesn't move much beyond these two break-evens. So when would this be useful? Let's imagine we've got a drug company which is about to publish the results of a medical trial. Either it'll be successful, in which case the share price will rise massively, or it'll be a failure, in which case the price will tank. So we don't know which way it's going to go, but we know it'll go one way or the other. Well, in that case, a straddle would be perfect. Notice that we're buying both of these options with a strike of 417, and we have to pay roughly equal amounts for both. And that's why this is such an expensive strategy. Now, we'll lose money with this straddle if the price of the underlying ends up between 369 and 464. But if it's outside that range, we'll either make money on the upside or on the downside. We don't really care which it is. But I wonder if there's a way to make this option strategy cheaper. I wonder if it involves selling some of the upside and downside with more options. And that's exactly what we do with the iron condor. Now this has made the straddle cheaper in two ways. Firstly, I've moved the strike of the put and the call apart from each other. So I'm buying a call at 460, which cost me $4.81. And I'm buying a put struck at 370, which cost me $12.78. But at the same time, I sell a call with a strike of 500, and that gains me 94 cents. And I sell a put with a strike of 330, and that gets me about $7. Now, unfortunately, the break-evens are further apart than they would be with a straddle, but this strategy is a lot cheaper than a straddle. Now, this is called a condor because it looks a little bit like the bird with the wings here at the top because we flatten the upside by selling those options, both on the upside and on the downside. But that's why this is a cheaper strategy, because we've sold those options. So options are great fun, but before you rush out and buy them, let me just make you aware of some of the dangers which I see. Now, the first danger is complexity. If you don't really understand something, you shouldn't buy it. So it does require a huge investment of time to understand options deeply. And even then, it doesn't guarantee that you won't screw up. And that's why I think for most people, keeping it as simple as possible is the best way forward. The other drawback is that for some of these option strategies, it's a lot like gambling. And many of the cognitive biases that make us bad investors are amplified by options. So for example, fear of missing out. When we see a huge potential payoff from call options, we're very tempted to overtrade or take too much risk. And by their nature, options come with an expiry date. And that means you can't just leave them and ignore them which is a great way to invest with indices, for example. Once you reach the expiry date, you're forced to do something, either to roll over the option position or to take out a new one. 
So if you've been investing for many years and you feel you've got those cognitive biases under control, then perhaps you should consider options. But first, you should definitely look deeper into how they work so you've got a full understanding of their risks. So you can probably tell I love options. I've taught many courses about them when I used to work at an investment bank. And we're also thinking about creating an options course with Pension Craft. So if you are interested in that, please get in touch and tell us and we'll develop the course. And if you do want to join our community, we can talk about options there too, then it's easy. Just click on the link in the description beside me and above me, and then you can join us on Slack and chat to me and other members of the community. And you get access to all sorts of members only content, including videos, which you can vote on. So as always, thank you for listening.